All right, boys and girls, I'm very excited to be here with you today for another new lesson, and this one is on Jacob the supplanter, and that means a, a deceiver. So what Jacob did to his brother, God ends up having happened to him. So we have a lot to learn here, and I'm very excited to share this with you. So let's get started. The theme of today's lesson is what we do to others, God has happened to us, and that's to bring us to repentance. Jacob conned his brother out of his birthright, which is like his inheritance, for a bowl of soup, and then with his mother's help, conned his blind and old dad into giving him Esau's blessing, which was a prophetic word that was spoken over him as to what his future would be. It was a serious thing and would really hurt Esau's heart. God sent Laban into Jacob's life to do the same kind of thing to him. God allows people into our lives that do the same thing to us that we did to others in hopes that we will understand what we did was wrong and how it hurt others so that we will repent. And now we're going to see what I'm calling con job number one. Jacob trades Esau's birthright for a bowl of soup. And this is Genesis chapter 25 verses 29 through 34. And starting at verse 29, and Jacob cooked a lentil stew, and Esau came from the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with that same red stew, for I am weary. So he was really tired and hungry. Therefore his name was called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day your birthright. Your birthright was a very special thing. The firstborn was to receive double the inheritance and will be the leader of the family when dad dies. Jacob offered to give him a bowl of soup if he would give him this, and that was a really bad trade. And Esau said, Look, I'm about to die, so what is this birthright to me? So Esau wasn't literally starving. You know how when you're really, really hungry, maybe you've gone a couple hours past lunch and you're like, ah, I'm starving, I need to eat. Okay, that's about like he was. He wasn't literally starving, he missed lunch, okay? And in verse 33, and Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore to him and he sold his birthright to Jacob for a bowl of soup. That's really bad. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. So Esau did a really bad thing here, and it greatly displeased God. And Jacob did a bad thing too. And now it's story time. So this is what I call con job number two. And of course, this is a true story. And Jacob steals Esau's blessing by deceiving his old and blind father. And we're going to read quite a long passage here. This is Genesis chapter 27, verses 1 through 40. Starting at verse 1. And it came to pass when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see. He was blind. He called Esau, his oldest son, and said to him, My son. And he said to him, Behold, here am I. And Isaac said, Behold now, I am old, and I do not know the day of my death. I don't know when I'm going to die, but I'm getting old here. Now, therefore, please take your weapons, your quiver, and your bow, and go out into the field and hunt for me some venison. And take me savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat and that my soul may bless you before I die. And Rebekah, that's Esau's and Jacob's mom, heard when Isaac spoke to Esau his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. And Rebekah spoke to Jacob her son, saying, Behold, I heard your father speak to Esau your brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat, that I may eat and bless you before the Lord, before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command you. Go now to the flock, and bring for me there two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat, for your father such as he loves. And you shall bring it to your father, that he may eat, and that he may bless you before his death, and steal 
Esau's blessing from him. Notice, Jacob's mom is the one that put him up to it. Jacob should have said, It's not right for me to lie and deceive my brother, Mom. Mom, I can't disobey God. That's wrong, and I can't do it. So we're to obey God always, even if it was our parents who were to tell us to do something that we know is a sin, like lying and deceiving our brothers. But we are to be respectful to them still, and lovingly let them know that it's wrong. Back to verse 11. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Look, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth-skinned man. Perhaps my father will feel me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, which he was, and I shall bring a curse upon me, and not a blessing. And his mother said to him, Upon me be your curse, my son. Only obey my voice, and go fetch me the goats. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother, and his mother made savory meat, such as his father loved. And Rebekah took his older brother Esau's best clothes, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands, so he be hairy like his brother, and put them upon the smooth part of his neck. And she gave the savory meat and bread which she had cooked into the hand of her son Jacob. And Jacob came to his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I. Who are you, my son? And Jacob lied and said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done just as you have told me. Please arise and sit and eat of my venison, that your soul may bless me. And Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And he lied and said, Because the Lord your God brought it to me. And Isaac said to Jacob, Please come near that I may feel you, my son, whether you are my very son Esau or not. So remember, he was blind, he couldn't see. And Isaac suspected it wasn't Esau, so he wanted to check. And Jacob went near to Isaac his father and felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy, as his brother Esau's hands were. So he blessed him. And he said, Are you my very son Esau? So he still wasn't sure if it was Esau. Well, Jacob lied again and said, I am. And Isaac said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat my son's venison, that my soul may bless you. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said to him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. So Isaac still wasn't sure if it was Esau, so he wanted to smell him now. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment, his clothes, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son Esau is as the smell of the field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore, God give you the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and the plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brethren and let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone that curses you and blessed be everyone that blesses you. So God allowed this to happen because Esau's heart wasn't right with God. So remember, he despised his birthright in that first con job I went over. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet barely gone away from the presence of Isaac, his father. In other words, he just left that Esau's brother came in from hunting. Now Esau also made savory meat and brought it to his father and said to his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison, that your soul may bless me. And Isaac his father said to him, Who are you? And he said, I am your son, your firstborn, Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? 
Where is he that has taken venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten all of it before you came and have blessed him. Yeah, he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me even also, my father. And Isaac said, Your brother came with subtlety and has taken away your blessing. And he said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He deceived me these two times and took away my birthright. And behold, now he takes away my blessing. And he said, Have you not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said to Esau, Behold, I have made him your Lord, and all his brethren I have given to him for servants. And with corn and wine I have sustained him. And what shall I do to you now, my son? And Esau said to his father, Have you not but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said to him, Behold, your dwelling shall be with the fatness of the earth and of the dew of the heaven from above. And by your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother. And it shall come to pass when you shall have the dominion that you shall break his yoke from off your neck. So Esau did not get near as good of a blessing as what Jacob stole from him. He's saying, you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to get the sword out and ward off the bad guys. This was not near as good of a blessing as what Jacob got. So we just heard in those two stories, when Esau was hungry, Jacob took advantage of his brother to take his birthright, which was a double inheritance and to be the leader of the family in exchange for a bowl of soup. And Esau despised his birthright. So really, Esau did the worst thing here, but I'm wanting to focus on a certain thing here as it pertains to Jacob. So that's why this lesson is about that. And then, with his mom's wicked counsel, Jacob deceived his dad so that he would give his brother Esau's blessing to him instead. And this was a serious thing because it was a prophetic word that was spoken over him as to what God would do. It was really his future. And that was really, really serious what Jacob had taken from him. But really, God allowed it to happen because Esau despised his birthright. It was a wicked thing that Esau had done. And this really hurt Jacob's brother Esau's heart when his brother did this to him, when he took his blessing from him. Now we're getting to the nitty gritty here. So what did God allow to happen to Jacob after that? So God brought Laban into Jacob's life and he thought Rachel was one pretty young lady and decided he wanted to marry her, but he had to get permission from her dad. Laban, her dad, said that if he worked for him seven years, he could marry her. So he worked the seven years and Laban deceived Jacob that he thought he married Rachel, but it was her sister, Leah. So I kind of wonder how the details happened with that, but it happened. But it was too late now because they were already married and it was a done deal. And back then, you could marry more than one woman. So Laban said, it's not right to marry the younger sister before the older. So work for me another seven years and I'll give you Rachel. So he did. He had to work 14 years for him before he could finally marry the woman that he loved. Jacob told Laban in Genesis chapter 31, verse 41, Thus I have been with you 20 years in your house. I have served you 14 years for your two daughters and six years for your cattle, and you've changed my wages 10 times. So God put Laban in the path of Jacob to deceive him like he did his brother and his dad. So what we're going to see is if gone unchecked, what we do to others, God also makes happen to us. And that is really to bring us to repentance. And Jacob, he was called a supplanter before, a deceiver, but eventually he got given a new name and that was 
Israel. And that's where the nation of Israel comes from. And when we do repent, we do choose to follow Jesus and turn from our sins. We're no longer what we were before, but who we are in Christ Jesus. So I give this summary out of Genesis chapter 29, and we'll go ahead and look at that. And what we can learn from this is God will also allow the same to happen to us. And that's in order to bring us to repentance so that we'll turn from doing those mean and hurtful things that we're doing to others and turn to Jesus. So like with Jacob, the things that we do to others, God will often bring people into our lives who do the same thing to us. And sometimes even worse than that in order for us to get the picture. Why is that? in hopes that we will see what we are doing is wrong and that we will see that what this person did really hurt my heart. And I did the same thing, for example, to my brother, and that must have hurt my brother's heart a lot. So, hmm. Wow, brother, I'm really sorry for what I did to you. That must have hurt your heart. Please forgive me. God, I'm really sorry for what I did to my brother, and I don't want to do that anymore. What I'm doing hurts others, and I know it hurts you. Please forgive me and help me to not do that anymore and change my heart, Lord. I need your help, God. And when we do that, God will forgive you, and he will help you. He promises us a new heart and a new mind. He promises to take that heart of stone out and give us a heart of flesh and cause us to walk in his commandments. So it's important we come boldly to the throne of grace. We bring this to him and say, hey, God, I don't want to be this way. This is nasty. Please change my heart. I don't want to be this this way to my brother, my sister, my mom, my dad, people at school, whoever it is. But of course, we want to spend time with Jesus in prayer and ask him to show us these things that are in our hearts that we might not know about before it gets to that point. And that leads us to the closing slides of today's lesson. So lessons like this help us to understand truth from error, right from wrong, the things that make God happy and the things that we need to ask for Jesus's help with. It's important to talk to God every day in prayer and to ask him to help us to know what things to pray for and to help us to be more and more like him. Part of that is recognizing when there's things that we're doing that are wrong or we know are mean and hurtful to other people, like hitting people or taking their toys or back-talking mom and dad and not doing what they tell us to do. And we ask Jesus to forgive us of those things and to help us to not keep doing those things and to help us to love people like he does. The Bible says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. In other words, we never, never have to be afraid to come to Jesus when we need his help, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews 4, 6. Spend time each day reading your Bible and ask mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or a good friend to help you to read and to understand it. Jesus loves you so very much, and you're his kid, and you're someone very, very special to him. And I want to thank you so much for being here with me today for Lesson 19. I hope you learned a lot, and I'm really excited to know what the Lord has in store for Lesson 20, and we'll see you then. Love you guys. Bye.